Hello, my name is Miro Griffiths. I am a sociologist and teaching fellow in disability studies based at the University of Leeds in the UK. I've been asked on behalf of the European Network on Independent Living to provide you with a presentation covering the significance of the models of disability. I'm going to talk for about 15-20 minutes um, and provide you with key information that should be able to stimulate discussion and your thinking on the importance of the models of disability but also about how we can then use that as part of our activism and campaigning in order to push forward and address the oppression and discrimination encountered by disabled people. I'm not going to be able to cover everything, so if you want to speak to me about the contents of the slides, you are more than welcome to contact me, and my contact details are on the last slide. Okay. I think a good place to start would be to recognise what the models of disability are for. And I'm using Michael Oliver's ideas around the importance of research. I'm gonna, and I'm using this not just in the context of research, but also when we discuss the ideas of what can be gained from understanding models such as the medical model or the social model. And building on the models of disability, Michael Oliver and other disability studies scholars have talked about the importance of capturing the experiences and perspectives of disabled people and ensuring that disabled people's voices on their own uh, experiences and on their own viewpoints about how society marginalizes them is really important for our work and it's very important for the development of the different models associated with describing and understanding disability because what we'll see is how the medical model and the tragedy model has emerged because disabled people have had their voices silenced and because non-disabled non oppressive social structures within society decided to speak on behalf of disabled people and dictate the terms and conditions as to how disabled people were going to live their life. So it's really important that we build from the experiences of disabled people and recognize that when thinking about how the models have emerged, in particular the social model of disability. The second point is to think about how we use the information to influence policy making processes and most importantly improve disabled people's life conditions. Again, thinking back to the models of disability, when we talk about the different models of disability, we want to understand how they contribute and affect the way policy has been designed at a local, national, international level, and how policy is then designed to either support disabled people and realize the ideas and values of, say, independent living, or alternatively, how policies have been developed that perpetuate our marginalization, that continue and sustain the discrimination that we've encountered. And finally, the third point, which is really, which is really important in the context of the models of disability, is this engagement with the political struggles of disabled people. And what Oliver and other disability studies scholars and activists across the globe have highlighted is that disability is a political issue. The experience of disability, the idea of disability, becomes a politicized issue because our marginalization and oppression is, caught, is, is, is sustained by the political, economic, social, cultural structures within society. And the social model has been an attempt to try and distinguish between 
how society is organized, which then creates the conditions and, and, and continues these conditions of marginalization. And it distinguishes between that and, say, the way that our body operates, or the way that we process information, or aspects of our mental health. And this is what the models are doing. They are trying to position where is the problem of disability? Who has responsibility for it? How do we address it? And again, what Oliver and, and others involved in campaigning and activism is saying is that the social model and the medical model and the tragedy model or the charity model, what they are doing is positioning disability and the response and reaction to disability in particular places. And they can position it in terms of responsibility of the individual, or it can be positioned in responsibility of the way society is organized. And that's why it's essential that we think about this within the context of, of a political struggle. Disabled people, the experience of disability, the understanding of disability and what to do about it is most definitely rooted in the idea of, of a political struggle. So we need to engage with the politics associated with our oppression and marginalization. And that is what the models build towards understanding. And finally, this point with C.W. Mills. C.W. Mills was a sociologist. Um, again, his writing didn't necessarily focus on specifically on disabled people, but the likes of Michael Oliver and, and other scholars have used C.W. Mills' work to reinforce the importance of how the wider historical and political circumstances associated with our personal lives, our personal experiences, how they contribute and reflect the conditions that we have on a daily basis. So if you are a disabled person and you can't get out of your house because you don't have the right level of support, you have uh, people in the community who are really hostile towards you, you can't get a job because the employer is, is, is uh, prejudiced or discriminatory against disabled people, the environment is not accessible, there's no support provision, you can't be a, a valued and respected member of your community. They all may be experiences on a personal level, and they may be told by disabled people on a personal level. But what is really important and what the, the models of disability have led to is understanding those personal biographies, those personal experiences, but placing them within a wider historical and political circumstances. So on a personal level, I may not be able to access my environment because it's inaccessible for my access needs. I may not have the right level of support to do the things I want to do in my life. But actually, if I understand it within the wider historical and political circumstances, I realize that actually there has been a continuation of policies that have done nothing to improve my living conditions. There has been a history of disabled people being marginalized, being oppressed, and this has led to the situation that we now, now find ourselves in. So moving to the models of disability, I think it's really important that we recognize what a model, of dis what a model is. A model is not a theory. A theory is an expla explanation of a complex situation. But what we have here is, with a model, is a description. It's helping us to understand the situation, maybe for ourselves or for others. So what the models of disability are doing is they are showing the conditions in which we can make sense of a complex situation, okay? So we are starting with an interpretation of how things are for disabled people, and then we are moving towards trying to make sense 
of what disability means for disabled people, how to understand it, how to articulate it. And I think this then moves us into recognizing well, which models are we going to talk about. And I'm going to focus particularly on the medical model, the tragedy and charity model, and the social model of disability. So the individual model argued by Oliver is, is encompassing a whole range of issues which are underpinned by this idea of tragedy and emphasis placed on, on medicalization. And this is significant because what it does is it places a responsibility of change with the individual. If we emphasize medical intervention, then what we have is an individual who is marginalized, who is oppressed, but the way to solve the barriers that they experience is to focus on the cure, focus on the rehabilitation, and if that's not possible, focus on the segregation. And this has been historically the dominant narrative experienced by disabled people. Historically, disabled people have been institutionalized, they have had their voices silenced because professionals and those who are engaged in medical practice have decided the agendas, have proposed the suitable approaches to take in order to address the experience of disability. And their decisions and their agendas and their policies have been rooted around this idea that the individual has you know, a physical impairment, has a mental health condition, has, uh, has, has, con has lab medical labels or learning labels, and these labels therefore mean that this individual is the problem. And this is really key because when we say that the individual is the problem, we can then build towards policies and structures which reinforce that perspective. And that's what's led to an emphasis placed on cure, on rehabilitation, and the expansion of institutions that prevent disabled people from being part of their community, and more importantly, prevent attention or emphasis placed on how society, the social structures within society, how they are organized, which then create the conditions of being disabled. And this is really, really essential when we think about the personal tragedy as well, because the response is then what from people? The response is usually that, the, that a non-disabled person will feel sorry for a disabled person. They will view their experiences on a daily basis as suffering, as tragic. And when it's tragic, the response is then to provide some sort of charity. Paying into an institution, paying money to support somebody to have access to a limited service. This is sporadic attention is placed on the issues that are faced by disabled people. And this is key because then what happens is that disabled people don't get the right level of support. And the political and the economic and the social structures within society don't get any attention, which then requires change. The, the emphasis is placed on the individual. The emphasis is placed on people providing some sort of charity because they view disabled people as tragic circumstances. And this is key for the social model of disability, which we'll come on to shortly, because the social model of disability is a way of challenging this idea, challenging the idea that the individual is a problem. And the social model gives us a window then to think about politicizing 
the experience of disability. With the medical model, the tragedy perspective, these do not politicize disability. They reinforce it within a narrative where people are unable to do things, where the problem is with the individual and therefore our understanding of the problem is rooted in ideas of having specialized care, institutions, having support provided predominantly through therapists and specialists, thinking about how the individual is pitied, how the individual is in need of sympathy from people, thinking about how disabled people don't want to be in the situation that they're in, that they don't feel comfortable with the way that their body is or the way that their mind processes information. So here we've got a, a, a focus on curing care, we've got this idea of, of disability being a personal tragedy rather than a condition of the way society is organised. And this is led to, as, as French and Swain, two particular writers, have talked about how non-disabled people then want to distance themselves from disabled people. And they want to eradicate or normalise disabled people as much as possible. Because they view this as something which is undesirable which is a problem for the way society is currently organised. And what we have with the individual model is that no emphasis needs to be placed on changing the conditions with the way society is organised. Changing the policies, the support provision, the role of disabled people in advising changes at a local, national, international level. All of this is to keep the disabled person away from the community. And moving to the social model of disability, what we have here is a recognition that disability is a consequence of the way society is organised. And this takes us back to the work of, of Paul Hunt. Paul Hunt was a UK civil activist and writer. He was living in an institution he lived there with a group of other disabled people who were determined to develop skills and gain more freedom. And they began to have a struggle with those who ran the institution because they wanted more control over their lives and they wanted to live in their own homes, in their own places where they could have choice and control. And this struggle, this demand for change, led to other institutions the people living in other institutions were then in a position to say, I want choice and control. I want freedom. And Paul Hunt wrote several uh, letters which were published uh, in, in newspapers. And in effect, he was asking for disabled people to be united in forming an organisation that would address discrimination against all aspects of their life. And this led to the organisation of the Union of the Physically Impaired Against Segregation, which was formed in the 1970s. And, uh, and the founding members became a, a group that were to be pivotal to the development of the disabled people's movement in the UK. And, and the reason for this is because their ideas their, their arguments was around distinguishing between impairment and disability. On the one hand, impairment is related to, to the way our bodies work, related to our health conditions, related to aspects of our mental health. But that is not what disables us. Our disability comes from the way society is organised. So Eupias, the Union of the Physically Impaired Against Segregation, said, It is society which disables impaired people. Disability is something imposed on top of our impairments by the way we are unnecessarily isolated and excluded from full participation 
in society. Disabled people are therefore an oppressed group in society. And with that, with that, with that distinguishing, with that distinction between impairment and disability, what you have is disability becoming a political issue. And we can see here, with the social model of disability, we can see how disability then becomes a public issue. It's not just a personal trouble, it's a politi politicised issue that requires a response from those with considerable power in society. And the, model, the models are a way of translating these ideas into practice. So thinking about the social model, thinking about how the problem is with the disabling society, the structures, the conditions, the organisation of society, which then leads to discrimination, segregation, no rights, inaccessible environments, access to, to no jobs, poverty and economic dependency. And what, you, what we have with the social model is a way of identifying our experience of injustice. We have a way of thinking about how we can resist. And this is key because writers like Beckett and Campbell talk about how the social model is used as a way to acknowledge what it is within society which disables us. And then we can use that in order to build the practices, the strategies, the agendas to create resistance, to challenge different groups who may be perpetuating our marginalization. And it allows us then to build a united and collected group, a disabled people's movement in the UK, in Spain, in Portugal, across Europe, across the world. The social model allows us to orientate ourselves towards thinking about what are we trying to resist, how do we resist it, and what do we need to do in order to build a more inclusive, accessible society. And that is what we have with the social model. It's a powerful tool for personal and collective emancipation. We start to realize with the social model that we are no longer the problem. And the problem is the way society is organized. And the problem is with those within society that decide and that influence the agendas and structures within society. And this has led to the development of disabled people's organizations. It's led to the importance of nothing about us without us and the recognition that disabled people have to have the tools and resources and platforms and positions to decide what policies should be developed which then lead us towards emancipation. When we talk about the independent living, we do not want doctors and non-disabled politicians and non-disabled policymakers deciding for us. What we want is politicized disabled people who take a social model perspective and have them in positions of influence and power so that we can then build support systems, build environments and change attitudes towards recognizing that it's not disabled people that are the problem, it's the way society is organized. So the social model facilitates these ideas of resistance and it, ma and it makes sure that we can then identify these barriers that exclude or restrict our participation. But more importantly, the social model 
also provides us with a alternative. It allows us to realize or debate or decide how society should be organized. The, the, the philosopher Foucault talks about heterotopical. The idea of opening up a space, making visible a different world within the existing one. And that's what we can do with the, with the, with the social model. We can use the social model as part of our activities, as part of our demands, to envisage a non-disabling, inclusive, fair, safe society. And we can build that into the fabric of the present society. And this is where we, we need to go to from now on. We need to embrace the ideas of the social model, challenge the ideas of the medical model and the tragedy model, support other disabled people to politicize their experiences on a daily basis. And then we can move towards demanding change and realizing what we need to do in order to realize independent living and wider emancipation. I hope that was of some, of, of some use. Please, if you want to speak to me, you can email me, you can speak to me on social media like Twitter, or you can call me. And there is a link there to my, um, my profile, my research profile. But please, we need to continue discussions. We need to support each other. We need to frame our discussions and ideas around the social model so that we can create change. Because change is possible. And oppression and discrimination and marginalization are deliberate. They are deliberately implemented by those who do not want disabled people to be part of society. And with the social model, we can make a difference and we can make change happen. Thank you.